ओम बांग मे मनसी प्रतिष्ठिता मनो मे वाची प्रतिष्ठित अबीराबीर्मी वेद स मनिष्ठ सुत प्रहासी अनेनाधीतना हो रात्रधामी वृतंग वदिष्या सत्यंग वदिष्या तन्मा तद्वक्तारमतु अवत मवत वक्तार ओ शांति 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 ओम मे माई स्पीच बी फिक्स्ड इन माई माइंड मे माई माइंड बी एस्टैब्लिस्ड इन माई स्पीच ओ सेल्फ मैनिफेस्टेड आत्मन do thou manifest thyself unto me o my mind and speech may ye be fit to reveal to me the supreme knowledge may i not forget what i have listened way without forgetting what i have learned may i be able to study day and night the right will i speak the truth will i speak May Brahman protect me. May Brahman protect the preceptor. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. So good morning. And today, our topic is the inner voice. This is a very interesting topic. all spiritual personalities are searching for what is the voice inside that inner voice is ringing all the time in its own majestic glory but it is we who have no time to listen to that inner voice why very natural because we are very busy with other noises other other calls other callings being so engrossed into those things we find no time to pay attention to that eternal voice of peace eternal message of blessings and that absolute unending reality which is in our heart all the time calling to come 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 Where are you? I am waiting for you. But the secondly, again the question, though it is so, but we have very little time to hear this voice. And first, first of all, to listen to this voice, that itself is a great achievement in life. And listening to that voice to respond to that call. It is said many are called. but few are chosen if we say many are called not many all are called that tagore beautiful statement is there and there's a music i always go for some fun for some songs like that i do not like i do not know whether you like it or not it says जगते आनंद लोके इन दिस होल वर्ल्ड फिल्ड विथ दैट ब्लिस यू हैव कॉल्ड मी ओ लॉर्ड यू यू आर इनवाइटिंग मी ऑल द टाइम टू कम वी आर ऑल बींग कॉल्ड देयर बट वी हैव नो सम हैज द टाइम लिटिल टाइम टू हियर वट इज गोइंग ऑन एंड सम हैड मोर इंटरेस्ट oh to respond to that call move little lean what and some go forward and touch that ground of calling where the voice is coming from we are all seeking for joy who in the world wants anything but joy who in the world seeks for anything 
other than peace and harmony and eternal blessings inside, which is inside. It's not coming. It's call apparently appears from the outside. But it's all the call is coming from inside. It takes some maturity to understand that. And that maturity we call spiritual life. So the topic is inner voice. You know the deers, they carry some beautiful fragrance. Kosturi, that's the Kosturi fragrance. And it's maddening fragrance. But it is the pouch of the deer itself. But they are knowing not where it is coming from. The deer becomes mad and runs hundreds of miles here and there where this fragrance is coming. Maddening fragrance. And running here and there and there and there. That is condition, our condition. That maddening condition is our condition. We are maddened to have that beautiful fragrance of eternal bliss and joy. That's calling us all the time. And we want to have it. We want to grab it. But we do not know what to search for. We are searching here and there and there. Like the deer. And that's why it is said. There is a beautiful Hindi couplet. Nabh kamal mein hai kasturi. That kasturi. That fragrance. Is in the navel zone of the deer. How this animal, in a derogatory term, animal means that poor guy, he lives in the consciousness, lower consciousness, does not understand that it is his, his, in his own source is here. And not finding that, and running here and there, what a pitiable condition. And then he compares. Kaise bharama mite pasukare. How this misunderstanding, how this search for things eternal, which is within, like the deer searching for that joy, how this misunderstanding, how this ignorance will go away. Kaise bharama mite Bina sadguru. Then he gives the idea that without having a proper guidance, proper teacher, spiritual teacher, jib aisai dhure. That is the way we individual beings in the world are running here and there. Like that of the helpless deer who does not know the joy, the source of joy within, searching everywhere, we also search that. So, is it that it is really inside only and not outside? Well, yes, it is everywhere. But at the first point, our ears are not tuned to hear. You know, you know, you know classical music, you have to be tuned, you, you have to be trained, your mind should be trained to enjoy that fineness of this tune and melody and everything. So, similarly, it is everywhere. It is resounding everywhere. But we are not ready for it to respond to that what is calling us all the time. In the, there is a, a spiritual text, you have heard the name of the book is Panchadasi. And Panchadasi, they, are, they have given a wonderful example <coughs> that in Vedic times, the, all the students used to come to the teacher's home and that those days there is not internet, age of internet that you can get in the Google everything. So they had the books. And the books was not given to the children. When they come, the teacher in his memory, all the Vedas are they are memorized. And they will teach these young boys, all the children, together. And that time they will chant with the notation of the hand up and down and marking the... Uh, high note, low note, etc. And they will memorize the whole of the chant. And when they are chanting, it's the sonorous music. That's why it is called the Veda. Veda is like music, music of the Vedas. 
And, but his own son is also one of the participants in the total music. Now, every father wants to listen to his own son's sweet mo voice. So if the father wants to listen to how his own son's chant is so beautiful, so what he has to do? His, he has to stop all other children one by eight. You stop now. You stop now. You stop now. So ultimately, the last voice will be the son's voice. So Panchatushi has given a wonderful example. Because in this Vedic time, that was the style. People can easily grab that example. So there is our own dear Atman. The voice of the Atman, the sonorous music is going on. But it is mixed with so many other voices. And if we want to do, to listen to our, that eternal voice inside, the message of that eternal bliss, which is ringing all the time, do it to stop. What to stop? Stop the other voice. You stop now. You stop now. You stop. And go on stopping, stopping. But you know, in this class of the teacher, Vedic teacher, there may be 10, 12 students. But we have many, many students with us. Infinite number of desires and a cravings and unfulfilled thoughts. They're always running bum, boom, boom, bum, boom, bum, boom, bum. Eh? As you see some very uh, young people driving the car with boom box like that. The whole road is bumping like that. Bum, 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 bum. So these are not only one, hundreds and hundreds of such thoughts. It is always cluttered in my mind and it does not allow me to listen to the inner voice, which is serene voice calling, Come, come, ye who are heavily laden with the arms stressed, Christ is calling, No, come, come, who are there, come, I'm waiting for you. That inner voice has been all mixed together and we are not listening it. It is all the time ringing. But we are not responding to that. We are not able to do that because of our mental condition and mind has associated with innumerable thoughts and ideas. And because of this infinite number of other forces, other sound, cluttered sound, the, that, that sound, eternal sound of peace and joy that remains unheard by us. So this inner voice is not that something foreign to us. But it is there, even now at this point. But we are not ready for it because of our distractions. And this distraction is that which attracts our attention and being mixed together, the inner voice of pure voice comes to us and carries different messages of frustration, anger, unfulfillment and the, its negative effects of suppression, depression or whatever reaction in our body, mind, emotions and in our everyday life. So it is a very important point that we ought to, we must prepare ourselves to stop this rambling of this sound that is created by our mind which is pulled in millions and zillions of directions. Because mind is engaged there, mind cannot Listen to that core message which is always with us. It is that I told you the story about one of our Swami, he was Santananda Swami. He was Holy Mother's disciple and he was pretty old and suffering from very few deep physical problems. But that is going to the body. He used to have constant hiccup. Non-stop hiccup, day and night. But when someone approaches and then you go there and he asks, he asks me, do you hear? Do you hear? 
What to hear? I don't hear anything. <laughs> I hear silence there in this in the in the holy Belur Mart in the early morning when I met him. It was calm and quiet and serene. What? Only few birds are chirping here and there. That we can hear. And then ultimately, don't you hear the Om going on continuously? See? I am standing in the same spot. He is hearing the eternal voice of Om and his mind in another plane. And I am blank. And I am blank or if I am connected, connected with some noise of or voice of them, some crows in the morning a cracking noise or sometimes the chirping of some birds no so this is the point it is there we are to make some effort prepare ourselves to have that inclination to have that voice we have to listen to that voice which is our real eternal inner voice which is all the time and that is my own everything is everything is secondary everything is meaningless excepting that voice which is inside that peace which is inside that joy which is eternal so you have to stop this process of this we find that that inner voice can be hard but we need some silence that's why ramakrishna in the gospel has emphasized that how to realize this truth he says you go to in solitude now it is you call retreat what is retreat you go to vipassana is very popular what do you do you stop off all other noise you just sit and observe whatever thought coming observe 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 why are you observing and they are running and this and that you observe observe let them jump and drop and dead jump and drop dead and then what all are drop dead then what will remain that will be the inner voice no so this is the stopping of the jumping of the mind and why mind is jumping don't give the blame to mind mind find something tasteful it's very tasty uh, very juicy so anything the mind gets through the senses brings it and finds little touch of joy it one second time third time fourth time and in infinite number of attractions are there so mind goes there mind never got the taste of the inner joy so that's why spiritual life is first to respond to the call of the lord ramakrishna in the gospel may probably have read but you can find that m the writer of the gospel he is inviting all the devotees he is calling brother let us go let us go to that holy land of dakshineshwar where ramakrishna is sitting and he is calling us he who does not understand anything but god and god alone who has come and taken a human birth only for the good of humanity for us he is waiting there to tell us how we can solve the problems of the suffering problems of our life he will tell teach the person who is a monk the person who lives in the household life and he is waiting for us in that holy land of dakshineshwar and again he is calling come come and what a beauty here i come here and i see why i am liking everything in this dakshineshwar the ground the trees the plants the human being and here he finds sri ram krishna he is going on saying i am just but just trying to give a verbatim idea but not the true exact words 
and this look at that sri ramakrishna waiting there sitting there as saturated in the consciousness of the divine and he is the ocean of compassion and he is absolutely absorbed in that bliss he is day and night all lost into the love of the divine and he is intoxicated and he is smiling and his smile is reflected that's the beauty he's a very poetic expression his smile is reflected not on his in the face of him but is reflected on the devotees who are surrounding him it is not ending there the same joy is reflecting in the flowing water of the rivers river ganga it is that same joy is reflected in the trees and plants and everything inside in the that holy land of dakshineshwar why i am feeling such a emotion to love everything everyone because that that joy is reflected everywhere see he is calling us and he himself entered into the realm of stopping other attractions he had the power to say no to other things and ran to dakshineshwar and what m the writer found that he is in a different realm of world where ramakrishna who is god incarnate and he is absorbed in that ecstatic bliss of the inner truth and his face is shining with joy and blessings and that joy is reflected on all the devotees who are surrounding him and not only that in the material world what in the matter in the flowing river in the st- in the road in the earth and he said every dust of dakshineshwar is appearing to me as holy 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 that holiness reflected everywhere so seeing it is a it is a transformation first that's why we can get some great idea that as if he is calling us to go into a market place where only you can have what is sold there it is the joy that market place you can buy joy only bliss only no suffering no pain no world it is all divine all pure and aim is calling us and he went there and he's describing his experience if you are you are responding to that call then you get the reward of this but it has its great price you cannot say any phone call comes okay let me finish the pen phone call and go there throw away the phone you have to ready have that strength and readiness to, to respond to that call which is coming from within and em did that went to dakshineshwar felt the presence he was sitting in the same room where ramakrishna was there and ramakrishna is ecstatic in his experience of joy and blessings and he felt the same joy in his own heart and not only that it is not feeling here and he went out he saw the nature the whole universe whatever fall in his eyes the, the sun the moon the stars the earth the flowing river the ground the trees the plants everything is pulsating with that joy what a transformation this is the result of having responding to the inner call inner listening to the inner voice when christ called come ye follow me and who followed and what he said they are the fishermen and then he said that i shall make ye the fishers of men fishermen fishers of men to catch them and take them to the path of illumination and there are the few people many are called mark matthew thomas and some of the few interior group who what they did 
that when the call came, they did not say, oh, I'll have to do this and do that. Even they say, okay, I'll have to take care of my who brother died and then I'll have to take care of bury them. What he said? Let the death, dead bury their dead. You come up. See, that is the call. The inner voice it's called. It is not so easy to respond. Many, our, many of our inner attachments and clingingness things, uh, we think that, oh, wait, this is to be done, that is to be done, that is, okay, everything finished, then I shall go with you, O oh Lord. But the Lord says the train has already left. <laughs> of course, train, his train is always available. <laughs> it is not true that the train leaves any time uh, because he is everywhere. But the question is that it is very important to note we should have to be ready for that. Readiness is important. Inner voice, the call. Sri Ramakrishna lived that and he is feeling that it is all made of oneness. And if you continue to that gospel, that part, when Amy is calling like that, you continue that and then he said, why today? Aim is saying, why today I am feeling that everything is made of the one, one element, like wax garden. Everything is made of wax. The garden looks like a tree, but it is made of wax. There is some bench. It looks like a bench, but it is all made of wax. And I can see that oneness everywhere. The man sitting there, it is also made of wax. It is made of God, God, God element. Satchidananda is permeating in every pore of the reality as we see as real world. It is no more the world, but it's permeated with that consciousness. What a transformation if we respond to the inner call. We find that and he, Sri Ramakrishna used to go into the and he, he cried. He cried, he used to go to the roof of the music tower and used to cry oh ye come come I am waiting for you I am tired of talking with the people worldly people who are talking about mundane things of the world I cannot bear it anymore ye come who are pure souls so that I can console myself to find he is asking for us the same story happened it is happening eternally. It, I gave you the example of Christ. Uh, I go, got the example of Ramakrishna. You go to the Vrindavan, that story of the Radha Krishna story. Uh, it's a very famous story. Krishna, a symbol of the Paramatma, the supreme self, he started playing a flute. What time? Odd time. In the middle of the night. But a moonlit night, that's, there is a charm in it. And when he played the flute, everyone is engaged in their activities in the life. So many people have their taking care, the ladies are taking care of their mom, mother-in-law, father-in-law, maybe the baby, maybe for the husband, or serving someone. That call when it came, Krishna played the flute. They forgot everything. Inner voice struck their ears. And they forgot all other responsibility. And what happened? They ran, ran, ran. Where they are running, they do not know. But they are running towards that flute. Where is the sound coming from? And then they ran, ran, ran and met Sri Krishna. And then the, and they had the vision of Krishna and played and danced and sang the whole night in joy. Each one feeling that the Lord is with me, the Krishna is with me. And after that playing, when they came back to the body consciousness, they my God, what 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 will happen now? Don't think this that society was like free society like today. The wife is out whole night. Where did he go? <laughs> and they are frightened to enter into the home. But the story says that they, when they came back, 
They saw that somebody has done their all duties in each home and no one recognized that they had gone out. They have come back. Meaning, it is the divine power of the Lord which makes it. They didn't go physically. Actually, their heart went there. And they dwelt the whole night with God. Though the description goes a physical thing, but it is happening all in the spiritual realm of the heart. So, you see, it is call, 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 the same thing, but few are ready to respond. There are many who could not respond, who didn't hear that voice, but many heard it and leapt immediately to respond to that inner call. That's why we must have to feel that that, that call is there, and we have to find and respond to that call. We are all capable of doing that. But we feel our attachment to the other things which are today's importance is not tomorrow's importance. No? You know, like look at anything which is very serious today. It will not be tomorrow. Think of your life. How many serious things came in our life? And we abandon God. We abandon our inner voice. We say, no time for me. God, you wait for me. Let me finish my job first. And that we did. But at the cost of what? what is the reward we got? We, are, we remain the same old person, unfulfilled, and asking for something which can bring Satisfaction, still craving for that, waiting for that, depending on outside, every day, every moment. So to respond to that call is very important. I give you another example how in the Upanishad it is said, you know that story I several times I've quoted. It is in the Upanishad. It says that the the student's name was Shatta Kama and his guru he, the student went to know about the truth, about the inner truth, about God, about divine, as we may say. And the guru gave him some instruction and then asked him to take some cows to the forest and graze them and make them strong and come back to the center of the guru's ashrama when they will be thousand. So number increases to the thousand. Till then, you go and this is your duty. And then he went, listening to his teacher's instruction, followed whatever the guru has told to practice every day, offering the fire sacrifice every day in the evening, morning meditation, and doing the duties. And then what happened? One day, Long time passed, he's engaged in his duty, what Guru has instructed following that, and in silence, you can find some time to think of yourself. What you want? What did you achieve? What did you lose? What have you gained? These questions, that, that can be solved in silence. And then, no cluttering of external noise, no cluttering of external informations coming, bombarding the mind, no television. And uh, Swami, uh, Swami, one of our Swami used to say, God vision and television. <laughs> he was too austere. He said, does not go together. <laughs> but it's too much. But anyway, point is that, but it is, you are bombarded with so much information. So where is the time to be silent and listen to your inner voice? So, but that was a perfect atmosphere where this Swattakamo is in the forest in a in a uh, open land under the sky beautiful sky seeing the distance everyone become philosophic if you look at the stars every night is it not anyone must have to turn to be a philosopher if you really look at the galaxies and the star positions in the sky thinking what is going on who is this who has, who has created that question comes spontaneously of the creator who is the creator? Whose plan is going on? 
You are saying all signs because this, because this, because who planned that first? You are talking about the activities. Oh, brain cells, neuron, this, that. We are talking all these things. Who have designed that first? Why it is happening? So, naturally that question arises. And this Satya Kama took advantage of those, every possible uh, impetus which can, so nature can give. And then one day he heard. See, again, this is a very important point. He heard that the bull, being the leader of the, all the cows, is telling, Oh dear Satya Kama, that we are, have now become thousand. So take us back to your Guru's place. And I am very pleased because you have served us all together. So I am giving you a one part of the experience of the Brahman. And what is that experience? You see what you see in front, what you see in the back, what on the right, what on the left. This is all that Brahman. And that is the advice I give you. And he was so overwhelmed with that experience. And, and then the bull ended saying, I have given you one part of the knowledge of Brahman. You will be given another part of knowledge by the fire which you are worshipping every day. It is not fire, fire God. And, but the question is a very serious question. Did really this bull said all these words? Or it is the inner voice? We always get a message from the world, no? Through somebody, some person sometimes, some animate, inanimate objects. You get a message. But sometimes we don't listen to that message. But this boy is so pure. He did his duties selflessly. Served the Guru's words. Meditated, plain, and be in the nature to recept, keep their mind receptive. And as a result, he heard that voice of a, of a bull and uh, make his inner string as it the tune of his uh, what you call the string instrument it resonated and gave the voice that it is God everywhere in the east in the west in the north in the south and then he continued next day the hissing sound of the flame of the fire he says e, see whatever in the bright light in the sun in the moon in the stars it is, it is that light, it is the light of Atman, Brahman. And he got totally from inanimate object. There is no human being there. That means he is listening to the inner voice. And as a result, after four days of listening to that, when he came back to his Guru, and Guru saw in his face the brightness and beauty of God-realization, he said, Hey, where did you go? Where did you get this? Your face shines like a brahm, no one of truth. Have you given me up? I was your guru, but you give up me? And went to another guru and take all these instructions? This is just for testing. But the student said, no sir. I didn't go to any other guru. But I followed your instruction. And this has happened. The bull told me this. The hissing fire told me this, how a hissing of the flame of the fire can say something? How the cow can teach you Brahma Jnana? Is it not? That means it is the question of preparation. When you are ready, you can hear from anything and everything. So that is the inner voice. You are not to purchase from somewhere. Rather, we have suppressed it with so many things, so many mundane things. And we are so busy with the mundane, so much, we are never ready to listen to that voice. When it comes, we take it as a superficial something. It is good, it is nice, okay. And then within 
five minutes you forget that and burden it with other unnecessary uh, unimportant things it is a real a call that's why it's called it needs sacrifice what is that sacrifice sacrifice of renunciation renunciation means giving up the apparent and loving who is behind this apparent need not you will have to go into the forest but to be in the world in the life having all relationships but at the same time to see the inner voice who is there attracting my attention who is there loving me who is there who i in me feeling love for others this is the one inner call and that is the call of the atman and that is continuously going on and it's cluttered and mixed mixed the our love for god and love for inner voice is cluttered with the other voices together therefore we have to separate out how to separate out to see the only presence of that call of the divine wherever my eye goes and get attracted who is calling me through my eyes i am hearing a beautiful music sound who is calling me through this how i feel attached to that how i feel attracted to that it is not the external noise but there is some inner voice which is calling me and that is my own own divine nature and that is my own calling we are reading yesterday in the what is called the nectar of supreme bliss that book and there he is saying that whatever you are seeing in the universe in the five elemental things in the world earth air fire space water these are all permeated by the divine consciousness and that is you are that your divine self and that is calling us but we don't see who is calling behind we get stuck into the outer frame of that object so we love rose roses but you don't love the roses when they get dried up when you feel your identification there you like it that is who is calling to that beautiful rose who is calling in the rising of the sun setting of the sun the moonlit night the ocean it is a calling who is calling that inner voice is calling see 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 how grand i am so beautiful i am i am manifesting through all the things in the universe don't you see me don't you see me and that's called the spiritual life spiritual life search is for that and <clears throat> sami uh, vivekananda has given this in this modern age how to get into that this even even from the story of the satya kama we can take few steps what we can learn out of it one learn that you must have to have some guide in your life who will guide you to enter into your inner space that is called the teacher we need and to follow the instruction in a particular tradition whatever tradition you go you cannot put one leg here another leg there testing this and testing that and te- that may be before you uh, go to shopping you can test you know candy shop you go and they keep so many candies there you can test little bit by it eh? but for your regular use you select one item out of that is it not you can test before but for after that you select one which is good for you and then you follow satya kama listen to his guru and before that he may have tested who is the ideal person in his life or not who can be helpful and then that's the first point the first find a guide in life and then follow what the guide tells us trust and faith in the words of that guide of that teacher create a mind ready to reflect within what the teachings are given are not enough we read these teachings do we reflect on that yes how come it is true or is untrue so reflection is necessary and with faith and trust 
withdraw. Then, if you believe that that is true, then withdraw. Try to have that power in yourself to withdraw your mind from on those things which are distracting to that silence which is within, and then avoiding all that which is contradictory to your goal of achievement. And that needs strength, that needs power, and that's called the spiritual practice. And associate with such things which will encourage your inner spirit to wake up, wake up, wake up. And the voice is within. I know there are many things we can go on. So our time is almost over. So we'll think of how Swami Vivekananda, this is my favorite poem. I have read it before you also. And our search for the inner voice starts at a point. But it ultimately it ends in fulfillment. Swami Vivekananda wrote that poem that is in search of God and where he says that when he started his journey to find God, the inner voice in everything in the universe, in hill and dell, in mountain caves, in temple, church and mosque, in Vedas, in Bible, Al-Quran, I had searched for thee in vain. Like a child in the wildest forest lost, I have cried and cried alone. Where art thou? My God, my love. The echo answered, Gone. We don't find any response from anywhere. We go to temple, kneel down before the church or salute before the deity. We don't see God anywhere. And that is the starting point. And then he said, And days and nights and years then passed. A fire was in the brain. I knew not when day changed into night. The heart Seemed, seemed in rain to twain. I laid myself down on Ganga, holy Ganga's shore, exposed to sun and rain. And then, with burning tears, I let the dust and wind and waters roar. I called on all the holy names of every clime and creed. Show me the way in mercy. O oh, great ones who have reached the goal. Each year then passed in bitter cry. Each moment seemed an age. Till one day, this is the important point, till one day amidst my cries and groans, someone seemed me calling. A gentle, soft and soothing voice that said, My son, my son, that seemed to thrill in unison with all the cords of my soul. I stood on my feet and tried to find the place the voice came from. I searched and searched and turned and see round me, behind me. Again and again it seemed to speak the voice divine to me in rapture all my soul's was hushed, entranced, enthralled in bliss. A flash illumined all my soul. The heart of my heart opened wide. Oh joy, oh bliss, what do I find? My love, my love, you are here, and you are here, my love, my all, and I was searching thee from all eternity. You here and there, and you are sitting in my heart, in your enthroned majesty. And that's the finding. Searching, nowhere. First search outside. Go to the temple, go to the church. First being in the world. Try all types of efforts, if you can find joy. Fail. Then come back. To go to temples and churches. Read by the Bible, Vedas, all these things. So go on. Then you find no response. Then 
one day crying and weeping means the mind becomes pure and pure and pure and pure a moment comes when you find someone is calling from your own heart and you feel oh my son come come i am here yes really the lord is waiting here forever we have no time to turn towards that we are turning here we are busy the call is coming from inside but we have no time and the poor guy sitting in our heart all the time and looking at our mercy when i shall turn back to him and vivekananda gave a beautiful description of the journey of spirituality how searching here and there in temple church is good but ultimately response comes here and he has given the very beautiful description you can read again and again get inspired you have the small book called in search of god the poem book and then you find that and what happened with the with the change comes after that vision that's more important when you hear the in, in, in internal voice the inner voice and then what happens what transformation happens this is thing what i have just mentioned from the gospel of ramakrishna aim calling and aims vision and aims transformation what he saw he saw go everywhere is filled with that joy and blessings in the trees in the plants in human being even the dust of the very dust of the ground is appearing to be holy that is the transformation comes here also we find that same transformation in a vivid language vivekananda says from that day which day when he have responded to the inner call and inner voice calling he found it here and then from that day forth wherever i roam i feel him standing by over hill and dell high mountain and vale far far away and high the moon's soft light the stars so bright the glorious orb of the day he shines in them his beauty might reflected lights are they the majestic morning the melting evening the boundless billowy sea the nature's beauty songs of birds i see through them it is he it is he what transformation is not it's very interesting no it seems it's good <laughs> to have this type of experience from nowhere feeling alone we are not alone we are not lonely we are alone better better term i i use this word i am not lonely i am alone alone with myself and that i is everywhere which is my darling my dearest thing that's why the transformation comes i love everything in a divine sense that's why in the eyes of the realized souls sinner and the saint are the same in their views because they don't see the outer crust of personalities the sea it is all made of one element and that is the transformation and he said that when dire calamity seizes the heart seems weak and faint all nature seem to crush me down with laws that never bound me see my hear the whispering sweet my love i am near i am near my heart gets strong with thee my love a thousand deaths no fear thou speakest in the mother's lay that shuts the baby's eyes when innocent child children laugh and play i see thee standing by my god god has come everywhere if the baby smile mother is just putting the baby to sleep putting the hand on the eyes eye lips that it is all god standing by everywhere god god from nowhere to god everywhere what a transformation if we listen it is we are not losing anything we feel sometimes we lose if we give so much to god it is not losing it is a gaining business 
Uh, the more, more than you have invested, you cannot believe that what is the end result coming. When the holy friendship shakes the hands, he stands between them two. He pours the nectar in mother's kiss and the baby's sweet word, Mama. Thou art my God with prophet soul. All creeds to come from thee. Thou art, thou art the soul of souls. In the rushing stream of life, Om Tat Sat Om, Thou art my God, my love, I am thine, I am thine. So this is in search of God. So we should have to do something about it. Let us take the responsibility in our life. Thank you. And next Saturday, December 2nd, Spiritual Cafe, Living in Balance with Swami Hori Namananda, 11 to 1, in convent, bring back lunch. And on Sunday, 3rd December, Ayurveda and Vedanta, finding balance. These are the two opportunity coming in the next week, probably, you know. It is next week is December 2? No. Oh, so, Saturday and Sunday. So, you will enjoy, because he is bringing Vedanta and the Ayurveda. Ayurveda, what is called? You know Ayurveda? How to balance the body and make the body strong so that you take advantage of that body and put it into Vedanta. <laughs> Thank you. So please come and we will have some question answer session here. <coughs> uh, whoever can come, please come. And I end with my prayer. prayer. Om Sarvai Bhavantu Shukhina Sarveshantu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Na Kashchit Dukkhavag Bhavit Om Shanti 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 Hi Om, may all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may no one be subject to misery. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us all. <coughs>